Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hi everyone, checking in on the USMJ sector. So some general notes before we get into individual names. In my opinion, the weakness that we are seeing the last four to six weeks in the sector is relative to the S&P 500 pulling back. When the S&P 500 gets a daily oversold bounce, we're right on the verge of daily oversold. I do believe that the sector, the Canadian MJ sector will bounce with it. And then once we change the daily trend in the S&P 500 back to bullish, whenever that is, that's when we're going to be looking for these names to get some meaningful relief, not just short-term bounces before another leg down. Illinois just approved recreational marijuana. That's big news. Illinois is the second biggest state or second, sixth biggest state in the United States. It has a third of the population of Canada, over 12 million people. So that alone is significant. That is the 11th state to legalize marijuana in the U.S. So an increase in 10% of the number of states a significant increase in the population having access to marijuana, and it's just another bowling pin being knocked over on our way to bullish stuff. <laughs> bullish stuff happening in the sector. So at the end of the day, from about 3.30 p.m. into the close, we saw some big bull moves across the USMJ names, and that was due to the news coming out. If you had been following the news, it was already known at that point. So that's a, a little bit of an early advantage knowing we knew Thursday that it was going to pass. And once it passed, it just had to be approved by the governor. He already said he was going to do it. So it was pretty much a sure thing and nice to have that little advantage. But where we go from here is Monday. We're expecting a bit more follow through because that news came out so late in the day that the market didn't really have full time to price that in. And we're going to be watching. I think the move will be muted significantly if the S&P 500 continues weakness after closing at the low of the day Friday. China has a white paper coming out with regards to information on the trade war and where they stand on Sunday, that will have a significant impact. If we have a green day on SPY on Monday, I think the USMJ sector will do really well. If we have a red day, we can still see some green in the USMJ sector, but I think it will be muted, like I said. So looking at names starting on weekly timeframes, GWPH pulling back from the all-time high, still very healthy overall. Anything over 151.32 will keep the uptrend intact on the weekly timeframe. Looking at it on the daily chart, we had our high, low of consolidation, lower high, and here we are right at support. If 171, 71 breaks, then weekly consolidation will be more clearly underway to try and form that higher low. And a pretty red week last week as the S&P 500 was pretty much red all week as well. IIPR is one of the better names holding up in the MJ sector, the USMJ sector, with reason being it's an REIT that pays a dividend and dividend stocks generally hold up better when there is market weakness. So we have the weekly time frame trading sideways for essentially months, but it is still an uptrend. 78.73 is the higher low here. And on the daily time frame, you can see this uh, choppy action to a certain degree. Significant ranges in between here. We dropped from 89 down to 81. That's a 10% drop in two days. We also saw a move from essentially 80 up to 91 in just a week. So big time volatility in both directions. Weekly chart still in an uptrend as long as 78.73 holds and the bulls want the daily trend back in their favor. Anything under 89.42 is just a daily lower high, keeping the downtrend intact. Cure Leaf. So the weekly time frame for Cure Leaf, we had support down at 10.97. We broke that support level, but not by a whole lot. And we did see a little bit of a bounce at the end of the day. So this is what a lot of charts look like at the end of the day on Friday. And you can see just a significant bull spike. And in a 15 minute span, the bulls went 4%, 3.5%. So now the question is, what kind of follow through do we get? And looking at the week, the hourly time frame, we can say that for Cure Relief, pretty much we're going to set an hourly lower high. We could open up with a 10% move, let's, let's say an 8% move, and still just look for an hourly lower high. So just be aware that a lot of these names are so beat up that it's going to take a lot to change their trends. And this impulse move, which is going to be caused by a good bit of shorts covering and some bulls getting in on the news. But just be aware that it's like what we saw on ACB and APHA on the Canadian side of things. ACB had bullish news to its earnings. 
And we saw the bull move, the impulse move in shorts covering and zero follow through. We have to follow through to change these trends. On the daily time frame for Cure Leaf, anything under 1304 is just a daily lower high. And at this point, that's 30% away. So we could bounce 25% and still be seeing a daily lower high forming. So just be aware that we have a lot of work to do in these sectors. And those who are patiently waiting for trend changes will have some more time to sit and wait. C-Web, got to use the US ticker CWBHF. We were uplisted to the TSX and now TradingView only has one day of data on the TSX. So that screws up the chart a bit. But looking at the daily time frame for the US, we closed down at the low. It's just continued weakness, this weekly time frame, pulling back very significantly at this point, breaking all support levels established. 1323 broke, not significantly at this point, but again, we're heading back down towards the all-time low. That's still a long ways away, but the lack of support established between here and the all-time low is definitely notable. We've now pulled back almost 50% from the all-time high back in April. That's a very rapid pullback, 50% in about two months, and there will be great opportunity for bulls, which is why sitting patiently in cash and waiting for some turnaround in the overall broader market is a good idea. Daily RSI almost oversold. TRUL, weekly time frame setting just another lower high at 1807. We have the daily time frame showing the big pullback from there. 1455 is the lowest price that we've seen, and we're heading down to that level. If 1455 breaks, the next support level that is clear is 1215. So again, you can see just how quickly things turn around. $18, and here we are down under 15, less than three days later. And it is a solid 18 or so percent pullback in three days. The sector is still very weak. IAN. So IAN is currently the only position that I have right now. And I'm still just slightly green with where we stand because I've been trading it shorter term and very actively managing it with flipping it. But you better believe that once I see some shift in the S&P 500 that I'm going to be adding USMJ, I learned my lesson in December when the market dumped and USMJ dumped with it, and then USMJ saw huge bounces when the market bounced. So looking at the weekly time frame for IAN, it's a bullish reversal candlestick. The daily time frame, we had a pretty bullish reaction to earnings, a bullish engulfing candlestick, and it's the most bullish candlestick we've seen in almost a month, in many weeks here. Still just a lower high if we cannot break 569, but a surge at the end of the day on top of a bullish day overall, definitely notable. What can the bulls do with it? Can they change this daily trend? Keeping in mind that we are looking for a monthly equilibrium. And if the daily trend changes from this point, the odds that our monthly high or low will be set in this equilibrium will increase a good bit. So keeping an eye on IAN and 569, even if we don't break 569, the more space the bulls can create for a higher low and then a trend change, the better. Look at the 12 period exponential resistance here on this chart. One, two, three, four, five rejections, essentially. And we're heading up to that level as well. CL on the weekly time frame, no major red flags here in terms of how much we pulled back. We did lose support of 14.16, but we didn't see a whole lot of follow through for the bears on that support being lost because of the buying of the dip on Friday. So bulls would love to break $16 early next week to take out some resistance levels. And if that were to take place, Breaking $16, we're looking back at the all-time high just like that. So again, the sector moves very quickly. When there's a lot of conviction in a certain direction, things are so thinly traded and there's not a ton of market makers with massive amounts of shares regulating the market like what's happening with CGC and Cron and names on higher exchanges. But CL here pulled back 25%, but from the low of the day on Friday, we bounced almost 10%. So you can see how quick this sector moves and looking at the end of the day action on the five minute time frame. That's an explosion for CL. The question is, how much follow through do we get? Can the bulls break $16? If not, it is just a daily lower high. OH, similar because those names are trading hand in hand with the deal awaiting. So we did lose weekly support, but not a lot of follow through. Bulls showing up in a big way at the end of the day on Friday. And that bounced from the low 10%. Key resistance will be 1190. If we don't break 1190, use the four hour time frame or the hourly chart to be looking at an equilibrium with our high, low, and we will look for a lower high if we cannot break 1190 on Monday, and that will be the hourly equilibrium setup. But again, just like that, 10%. So these names can move quick, 
and they can regain some of these 50% pullbacks pretty quickly as well if the conditions are right. HARV, bears in complete control. You can see complete different reaction. So yeah, we got some bull movement at the end of the day, but you look at that daily candlestick compared to what CL and OH did, and it is very different. The gap to fill is at 867. We have not filled that gap just yet. Anything on the daily chart under 1034 is just a lower high. That's pretty much 13% from where we stand right now. We can bounce 10% and just be forming a daily lower high and staying in that downtrend. GTII. So 1575 is support on GTII that broke, but we got that end of the day action. Strong close at the high, breaking resistance of 1628. And now the question is, can we change the downtrend? We are breaking resistances. Next level to be watching is 1779. So it's a great bull move. But again, we have to anticipate that the trends have been bearish for so long that a lot of these moves that are so quick and impulsive are shorts covering. Question is, can we form a daily higher low and higher high and to confirm the trend change? So the bull move will be great, but need to create space to form the higher low and higher high. And if we do not get that confirmation of the trend change, it doesn't mean a whole lot overall. MedMen new all-time low on Friday. Bulls buying the dip. Anything under 321 is just a lower high, but certainly cautious with the amount of strength the bears see on every new low. 290 was that low, and on Friday, we dropped down 6% below that support level very quickly. Bulls will try and break that lower high pattern, but coming off the all-time low, it's going to take a lot of convincing for me to be interested in MedMen. I have a lot of other names and monthly uptrends that I'm interested in. MedMen, certainly not one of them, but we'll keep an eye on that lower high resistance. Pretty much at this point, we're just watching for everybody. Can can everybody change the daily trend? KSHB, dump on the weekly time frame. Remember this weekly equilibrium that broke bearish and gave us that signal at 544? How about that follow through of essentially 24% now at this point, we pulled back under that support. Daily time frame is in free fall, daily RSI, getting close to oversold. Next support level is down at four psychological and then 395. So keeping an eye out for a daily oversold bounce, the more beat up, the better. I want the four hour RSI oversold, which it is. I would want the hourly RSI oversold, which it is not because of a weak bounce Friday. So I would need another leg down towards $4 if I were going to be interested in playing the daily oversold bounce. But again, there's so many other names out there and the MSOs are getting the spotlight with Illinois. KSHB is in some pain. CVSI, weekly timeframe is coming up on very key support of 433. If that level breaks, we lose the weekly uptrend, which is still intact at this point, even though we have pulled back in the last two months. At this point, 33%. So we're on the verge of this support being tested and we're close to daily oversold. When we do bounce, anything under 498 is just a lower high and a clear distinction between the hemp names and the MSOs. And these hemp names like CVSI are getting a lot more beat up than the MSOs are. And that's a generalization, of course, but certainly not seeing much by way of end of the day bullish action where the MSOs were. So a clear downtrend and a weak close and coming up on a key support level on the weekly time frame, potentially worth worth watching for a bottom fish. I'd be more interested if the daily RSI was oversold heading to that key support, four hour RSI, not oversold, hourly RSI on the verge of oversold, but just not the ideal bottom fishing conditions, even though that possibility for the trade is there if the bulls can hold that support on Monday. NBEV is close to breaking this weekly pattern bearish. Support is 505 and we're right down on top of it. Daily time frame closed at the low of the day and you can see really 502 actually. 502 and 505 is a base of support. Might as well use $5 psychological because a couple pennies won't matter. But if $5 breaks, it is a clear bear break and we will then be looking down at a gap to fill at 488 and then 472, and the weekly uptrend will be lost if we lose $5 support, so a key support test coming early next week. ZYNE is looking pretty healthy on this weekly consolidation. Declining bear volume, no red flags. We're looking for that higher low to form. We will be confident the higher low has formed when we change the daily trend. We have the low of the pullback. The high of the bounce is 1334. Now the bulls are trying for a higher low, and if we can hold this higher low and break 1334, We'll say our weekly higher low has been established and the daily momentum will be back in favor of the bulls. Looking at it on the hourly time frame, a bit of an equilibrium here. So we'll watch this equilibrium on Monday. If it breaks bullish, our daily higher low is set. 
and it's all about 1334 resistance from there. Worth watching ZYNE after, because you're not going to find many names in the USMJ space that are in weekly uptrends at this point, but ZYNE is certainly one of them. PYX getting tight on the weekly. We have the low of the pullback at 1666. And actually, we dropped to a lower low down to 1635. Anything on the weekly chart under 2370 is just a lower high. Looking at the daily chart from here, just tight, tight action. 1958 broke with no follow through. We've got support down at 1728 and then 1635. And I personally, if I were looking to trade this name, I'd want to see this channel break. We've been trading within this channel now for 15 days, and we're not going to get a whole lot of follow through until that channel does break. So PYX a little bit choppy on the daily and weekly time frame, which means I'm not interested in any of the short-term setups, but keeping an eye on it because we are watching for a monthly higher low to try and form in this pattern, which is an equilibrium, which is the case for a lot of MJ names, monthly higher lows trying to form. PLTH. So the weekly chart has a bit of a double top up at $3 psychological resistance. Our weekly higher low is 236. So the bulls need to get over $3 to see follow through here. We have our low, high of the bounce, higher low, double top. Short-term support is 273 and then two, actually it's 251 and then 235. Bulls were unable to break that double top and the bears have had more control since that second rejection over the last three days. So we do have to be cautious here because if we fade back down to 235, then the bulls lose their chance at keeping this weekly uptrend strong. So pretty much we have to hold 236 and break $3. Otherwise, I would call it a weekly bearish trend change. BAMM, I like the weekly chart here. It's an equilibrium setting up. We have our high, low of the pullback, lower high, and bulls are trying to form the higher low at 197. Has the daily trend changed? No. So anything under 295 is just a lower high at this point, and I'd love to see this range tighten into next week. I'd like to see a lower high early this week. I'd like to pull back towards the end of the week and hold perhaps 230 and then look for a, a tight range to break next week. Next, next week, not this coming week, as things tighten up here. So keep an eye on BAM. Tighter the better for these setups. Tilt is holding the all-time low, but just barely. Earnings came out. And the reaction was initially bullish, but it's fading a little bit. Bulls must hold 153 and break $2 to change this daily trend and give us a double bottom at the all-time low. But one thing that the bulls are notorious for is very fast big bull moves that just fade to lower lows, with the most recent one being the most clear. From the low to the high in two days, we ran 47%. And from there, it was just a slow fade giving back 35%, tons of volatility, but it's still favoring the bears in downtrend. So to sum it up, sum it up, bottom line, names that have exposure, MSOs and names that have exposure potentially to Illinois saw bull moves in the last half hour of trading on Friday. The question is, will shorts be squozen on Monday with a higher open and bull volume first thing? And the most important thing is not how much move we see here in reaction. It's can we see follow through once things settle down and the wave of short covering and bulls buying on the news subsides, can we form a daily higher low and higher high? And really it almost is almost the kind of scenario where if the S&P 500 shows weakness early this coming week and the MSOs get their bull move and then the S&P 500 starts its daily oversold bounce as the MSOs are looking for their daily higher low and continuation, that timing might work out as well to help those bulls with a secondary boost to see that continuation after the initial bounce. But again, as always, my eyes are glued to the S&P 500 and a lot of my decisions are being made based off of what the S&P 500 is doing. And once we get some relief for the bulls in the overall market, we'll be looking for monthly higher lows to be set and some solid 10 to 30% bull opportunities in these names that have pulled back so significantly. And this is the kind of thing where this is the, the state of the MJ sector in the US where we're getting this steady drip of positive news. When's the next state going to legalize? When are we going to have, how many states are going to be voting this next election cycle in, I guess it's a ways away, 16 months from now. Safe Banking Act still has to go to the House next. We have rescheduling always open on the table. So We'll see. Certainly never a dull moment. It actually has been a dull moment for the Bulls, but this is when it's time to be making moves. 
and at least establishing game plans. I appreciate you watching. Do good things out there. We'll continue to check in on the sector. We'll see you all Monday. Have a good rest of your weekend. Checking in with a garden update. We've got these little sour gherkin cucumbers going wild. Pretty much twice a day I have to adjust where they're climbing and grabbing as they get higher and higher. And I'm going to run out of space. Sending them along the side here. And you can see their little flowers and little cucumbers getting ready to go. Then we have the big boys over here climbing up. Got some cucumber production. Where are we? That big boy's growing real fast every day. And they're sending their own arms outward. Just letting them go wherever at this point. And there's a praying mantis that's been living here. I'll keep an eye out for him and try and get him. Tomatoes still flowering. Don't see any little tomatoes forming yet. Seems like the brandy wine, which are these wider leaves, they seem more resistant to blight. But cutting those lower branches off definitely slowed everything down. And we got the basil still going. Got some zucchinis. And cilantro's flowering, so that's on its way out. But I like eating a little cilantro every day. Wildflowers still going. Now we got the potatoes from the compost pile and some squash coming in from the compost pile as well. Not sure what varieties. Potatoes are huge. So I've hilled them up a couple times just by adding dirt to their base. Only one variety has flowered yet, and then they'll just die off eventually. And then you dig up the potatoes, pepper flowers. This is some kind of spicy pepper. This is a butternut squash that's starting to expand. You can see the little baby butternut. And we got eggplant, eggplant flower. And a lot of flea beetles have been eating this. You can see the leaves, these little dots. That's just little flea beetles taking tiny bites. Chard still doing its thing. Beans flowering. So they'll start producing. And one of these little guys, you'd be surprised how many string beans one of these will produce. Peas, they'll probably start flowering in the next week. But they're still climbing up. And every day I just have to come out here and help them hook on. Another winter squash. And the kale and the collard greens are going off. And that fan, I don't know if you've seen the YouTube video, but for mosquitoes, you mix warm water, yeast, and sugar, and that puts off CO2, which is what mosquitoes see or smell to bite us, and then the fan sucks them to the back. And so I come every morning and rescue the guys who are not mosquitoes.